Welcome to USSO's Eyes on the Fence. Hello and welcome to the latest episode in our series on American Studies outreach efforts. I'm Sam Thoza, one of the editors at USSO. Tom Cryer, typically our lead host, is in the second seat today. Tom, how are you? I am very well, thank you. I'm 80% LEMSIP this morning, but um, I'm looking forward to talking about this project. Yeah, I'm glad to have you. So we're talking today about an event that took place at Manchester Metropolitan University on November 16th last year. Uh, students from local schools were invited to attend a screening of An Evening with Mrs. Terrell and Friends, a play about the pioneering civil rights work of black club women in Washington, D.C., including the legendary Mary Church Terrell. Terrell was one of the first African-American women to receive a college degree, a pioneering educator, and a founding member of several vital civil rights organizations, including the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and the National Association of Colored Women. We are delighted to be joined today by two guests. First, we have the organizer of the event, Marie Malloy, who is a senior lecturer in American history at Manchester Metropolitan University. We're also very fortunate to have with us the historian, playwright, and director, Pamela Roberts, who researched and wrote An Evening with Mrs. Terrell and Friends during her time as a visiting fellow at the British Library's Eccles Center for American Studies. Marie and Pamela, it's lovely to meet you. How are you both? Very well, thank you. Thank you very much for having us here to talk about um, the brilliant event. Very well, Sam. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's absolutely our pleasure. So first, uh, to Pamela, I suppose. Why did you want to bring this production about Mary Church Terrell and the club women of Washington, D.C. to an audience of school students? Why do you think it's an important story to tell? Um, I wanted to tell a story, and it's an important story to tell for a number of reasons. Um, when I first started to do the research, I was fascinated by Miss Mary Church Terrell and the other two women that are featured in the production and they are Miss Rosetta Lawson and Miss Josephine Bruce and through my research what I found it was the enormous impact that these women had but are really heard of so their importance and their relevance to the civil rights movement has been neglected over the years and not prominently featured at all we associate the names of men at that time, that early period. So I wanted to illustrate and highlight the impact that these women made on the civil rights movement, and not only on the civil rights movement, on the suffragette movement. You mentioned in your introduction, Miss Mary Church Terrell. People may know of Rosa Parks, and she's famous for not giving up her seat to a white passenger. And that was a catalyst for the bus boycotts and also seen as very historic in terms of civil rights. But how many of your listeners will know in 1908, Miss Mary Church Terrell refused to give up her seat to a white member on the bus. Again, I said she was very active in the civil rights movement and the suffragettes movement. And she was also instrumental in ending segregation in Washington diners. The other woman I feature, Ms. Rosetta Lawson, was the founder of the Freelander University, which was for adult education. And her motto was, the parents needed education as well as their children. And the last woman I feature is Ms. Josephine Bruce, who was also instrumental in the Coloured Women's Association. So I wanted to highlight and bring the information to a wider audience. And I have this wonderful quote here from John Carey, who's a Sunday Times critic. And he says, this is regards to literature, to write exclusively for the learned or academic readership seems to me hostile to the spread of knowledge. But I took that also in terms of applying it to the theatre production. So to have something only for a certain section of the audience or population, because it's based on academic material, seems to me, as it says, hostile to the spread of knowledge. So it was important to spread this knowledge. People can also see the importance of these women. And as a theatre production, the imagery was very important to me because again, as African-American women at the turn of the 20th century, we're used to seeing them as in a cotton field, 
back's broken as a mammy, as a maid. And I wanted to illustrate the glamour, the intellectualism of these women, how they dress, how they carry themselves, to illustrate that importance. So to bring it to a school audience, it was an opportunity to challenge our perceptions and tell the story through a visual medium. That's great. Thank you, Pamela. Um, the question that kind of leads on to that is the local students. I'm interested in what aspects of this play really connected with them. Was this a history which they found themselves being familiar with from the A-level GCC education? And did they see links between this historic setting and what is going on in the US and the UK today? Absolutely. In terms of the connections with the students and the young people, I was blown away with their engagement, their participation, the range of questions and how well they interacted. Um, firstly, I was... When you show your work, you want to see if people engage, if they like it, do they understand it, do they get it, is the first thing you're looking at as a director, as a playwright. So that was good from that point of view. It was new to a lot of the audience, because from their curriculum, they studied much later period in, in the 60s. So I mentioned Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King will be more familiar. Mrs. Terrell and Miss um, Lawson was unfamiliar to them in terms of their knowledge and the activism of these women. One poignant moment for me, I talked about the visual imagery. And I remember one student who, her question was, we don't see women like this. I don't see that. I've never seen women portrayed. And again, it was that old stereotype of black women. And she was so moved by what she saw, even though it was a dramatic retelling and the information and the power of these women. I found that so poignant and so moving. So there was really engagement with that. In terms of contemporary issues, one of the questions I was asked, have we made progress in terms of racism and issues that are happening today? And my answer was two words. And the two words were Kamala Harris. So in terms of, yes, we have made progress in terms of women, civil rights, but there's still a lot of more work to do. In the production, I reference the murder of George Floyd, and I talk about Miss Terrell was a very staunch proponent against anti-lynching. But it was interesting, I kind of used the George Floyd murder to talk about how that issue is still relevant today. And the George Floyd murder was talked about as a high-tech lynching. So there's a point in the production where it's referenced, they're talking about lynching and said, I hope this deplorable practice is outlawed. Then it cuts to the murder of George Floyd. So the point I'm making is we still have a long way to go. See, things still needs to change. But on all, overall, the audience was very engaged with what they saw. I was amazed at the depth and wealth of knowledge of the questions and the interaction. Thank you, Pamela. It's wonderful to hear that. And I, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Um, so to Marie, uh, we at USSO are hoping to broaden the scope of our outreach efforts. That's Part of what this series is about and we're looking to learn from successful events like the one you've run um how did you go about setting up this event were you working with an established network of local schools and teachers i guess there are a couple of different ways in which i kind of set up the event i guess to start with um, it was my connection with pamela for this particular event we'd worked with each other before actually we'd met during the pandemic during the lockdowns when pamela was writing the play and um, through another organisation that I'm part of called Shaw and with the British Library, um, Pamela screened the play for them. And even though I knew a lot about Mary Church Terrell and her activism through my teaching, when I saw Pamela's um, film screening, it was absolutely captivating. And Pamela and I both 
were extremely keen to make sure, as Pamela said before, to make sure that the story and the, the, the film screening could be brought to a much broader audience of students. And I guess this connects to the, one of the roles I have at university. Um, obviously, in your role as an academic, you have lots of different hats. And one of the hats I wear, which I particularly love doing, is school outreach and widening participation. So I'm the lead for um, WP um, outreach for history, politics and philosophy at MMU. And I've been doing that role probably for five or six years now. And over that time, I've built up a really wonderful network and relationship uh, with local schools and colleges in the region. Um, myself, my colleagues and the wider outreach team um, have regularly invited um, schools and colleges onto campus uh, for lectures, for seminars and workshops. We go to local schools to do, to do events with our students um, and we teach and train our students to go and do workshops as um, student ambassadors and as RISE ambassadors to ensure that we're connecting um, and building relationships all the time with local schools. Um, so from those networks, um, we were able to connect with um, some schools that we'd previously worked with, with individual teachers and with individual schools. But I also um, wanted to reach as many schools as possible. So we have um, like a newsletter that gets sent out to the, all the schools in the in the in the region and the colleges, and we advertised through um, th that newsletter, um, and that made sure that we could reach as many schools and colleges as possible. Um, I also do a lot of work with the National Saturday Club, which runs across uh, the United Kingdom. It's a brilliant um, initiative where there are Saturday clubs that are run for free for children between the ages of 13 and 16 at universities and colleges and museums. And the one that I piloted last year was called Society and Change. And so we talk about a lot of these issues that are connected to um, Pamela's play to do with um, racism, to do with anti-racism, to do with um, gender equality. And so, again, I reached out to the, the students that came to the Saturday Club um, and through them to draw them in, to give as many people as possible an opportunity to come along. And um, I think we could have actually um, done the event several times. And so that's, you know, so many people wanted to come, but we had to cap it at a certain number for the day. But certainly in the future, maybe that's something that we can expand upon. Great. That's brilliant to hear about um, that initiative. It tallies with a lot of what we've heard in recent weeks from people like Bass's Bridging the Resource Gap initiative about the importance of bringing those two communities together. One thought we have kind of when we talk to a lot of these initiatives and programs which are trying to bridge that gap is what do we as American studies practitioners in higher education institutions and academia in all those varied settings, what can we give to schools? What are teachers and students most looking for in this contemporary moment? I think there's lots of ways we can continue to do work like this. Um, and I think this particular event um, with Pamela, I think has has been so it's been so fantastic because it's shown that in order to connect to schools and to colleges um, in new ways, I think creative practice co-production is so important. As Pamela said at the beginning, um, we want to make uh, American history, other history, um, very much um, connected. Um, we want to make it creative for individuals um, and make them to be able to understand the past in new ways. So I think this particular production has allowed that to happen and through the film screening, through having um, our own students at MMU being involved in it as um, workshop leaders, teaching about um, other women who are important in the civil rights movement and actually producing podcasts and interviews with students from the event. I, mean, I would say the relationship between schools and colleges and universities uh, is a really kind of symbiotic one. I think as uh, practitioners um, in universities, we learn um, as much from schools as they learn from us. And particularly over the pandemic, we've had the opportunity to work with um, schools and colleges in different ways. 
So we've been able to, at MMU and I'm sure in other universities across the country, we've been able to provide different resources for them, um, which has been helpful for them in lockdown. So I know um, beyond Pamela's event, we've done other things at MMU, such as um, celebrations. Um, I know with Manchester University as well and, and Salford, um, we looked at the Pan-African Congress celebration and we did an event online. So I think there's many ways to bridge the gaps between schools, colleges and universities. But I think it's about thinking in new ways, in creative ways, and to make um, to make maybe more hidden histories um, more visible. They're there, but perhaps within the national curriculum and the time restrictions that student uh, students and teachers have, it's allowing us to you know fill those gaps, broaden them out, and add to what they're learning. And I think that is where events like the events Pamela and I have recently done um, are so powerful. And I think when you look at the feedback from the events, from the students, both at the time, as I said, as Pamela said, the, the, question, the questions that the students asked, and they range from being in year seven through to year sort of 13, so they're quite an age range. Um, the questions that they asked were absolutely insightful. They showed that they had really connected to the topic and really thought about the connection between the past and the present. Um, and so I think when you talk to students about topics in the past and you talk about individuals in the past, I think drawing that contemporary resonance is so incredibly important. And Pamela's play did that in so many different ways, which I think showed up in the questions that the students asked and in the impact that it had, which we can see through um, you know, the feedback that the students gave us. Um, and I think if we can do more events like this, um, it's really incredibly important to make sure as many people as possible in different schools can work with universities, with external practitioners, creative practitioners, museums, um, activists, to really um, have a really inclusive history. And I think that's what, um, that's what uh, practitioners from you know, schools, universities, museums, etc., all want to do. I think we share that same um, vision. And so um, it's wonderful to do events like this in lots of different ways. And I know the schools that were involved really, really enjoyed it um, and found it a fruitful experience. But equally, um, I'm sure Pamela will agree, it was an incredibly um, enriching experience for, for myself and for Pamela as well. To echo Maria, absolutely, I, I agree. It was a very fruitful, productive and rewarding experience. And without wanting to sound too gushing, um, I really enjoyed the day. And, and the feedback from the young people were, was great. The only disappointment they had was it went too quickly. It was too <laughs> short. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did go very quickly, didn't it, Pamela? I think we could have easily, like I said, I think we easily could have had... Um, you know, a longer day um, is not possible within the school day, but we could have, you know, the, the discussions went on. But I think a lot of those kind of questions and kind of thoughts from the students are captured in part by the wonderful podcast that the um, MMU student ambassadors made with um, with Haseeb, who helped us from the Manchester Centre for Public History and Heritage. Um, and that is a legacy of the event. So I think when we do events like this, um, it, on the day, it's amazing, but it's also wonderful to capture the um, ongoing legacy. And we were really lucky for this event that we were supported by um, the Bass and the US Embassy that saw, um, you know, saw how important events like this actually are. And it's enabled us to also um, ensure that we can have a legacy of the event in terms of, like I say, the podcast or a blog written by the students um, so that other people can also hear about the day and about the life of Mary Church Terrell, which begins with um, Pamela's incredible research and her amazing skill at being able to talk about that story and to show it in a creative and engaging way, um, which, which everybody can um, connect to. I mean, Pamela also showed the uh, screening to um, the community in the evening. And so she's reached on one day multiple audiences. And I think that's really what we want to ensure we can do. 
I know this is an audio medium, so it's uh, not helpful for listeners, but I've been nodding my head so hard. Um, that's, yeah, I, I completely agree with everything you said. And I wonder, just to follow on from uh, what you were saying, are there any plans um, for future events of this kind? And Pamela, do you have plans to um, share the film at other institutions with other school audiences? Um, yes. So let me rephrase that again. So Marie and I, we're, we're pleased with how the day went and the outcome and the impacts. And one of the things we're now currently in discussion is looking at reaching broader audiences across the Northwest and how we can do that. Because again, as you said, it's important to engage with young people. So here we have a wonderful product and the idea is to share it with as much people to have the accessibility of knowledge. And that's what I like to do in terms of making archival material accessible. So we're now at the very early stages of looking at how we can share this to a wider audience across the Northwest. Yeah, I mean, just to say the same as Pamela, we, we both really loved the day so much and I loved working with Pamela particularly um, and with the school children and we want to make sure that we can um, do our best to take to take that story, that important story about Mary Church Terrell, um, to a much wider audience. And so that's what we hope to do in the future. I'm sure we will because we have the um, we have such a such a great play. Um, Pamela's such an amazing amazing practitioner, and it worked. We've got that pilot that works so well uh, at MMU, and that kind of co-production between between a practitioner such as Pamela um, working with the university, but also our own students. I think it's important to give our own students opportunities to be involved at MMU and then the schools is a, is a wonderful relationship, which I'd like to see, um, you know, in multiple events, but this particular event, yes, we definitely plan to um, you know, sort of cast our net a lot wider. Well, thank you so much uh both for your time it was a wonderful conversation and i really look forward to seeing where this goes in the future thank you very much for having us here today great thank you so much <laughs>